Hey guys, welcome back. Let's play Final Fantasy VI. Last time we made our escapes from the caves thanks to the almighty Moogles. And uh, don't tell Mog, but I think we stole his spear while we we're at it. Oops. This time, this is a classroom for the beginner. Here we answer your questions about the world. Think of us as your advisors. I'm not going to go over the uh, translations for any of the dialogue in here because it doesn't particularly matter. Um, I'm just going to talk to the people and comment on certain things uh, in terms of how it's going to apply to how we'll play the game. Uh, you can pause and read the side dialogue or the other translations if you are so inclined. But yeah, here is a free healing point for you if you care about that. Yeah, this is basically, you know, the uh, the beginner's room. I think the beginner classroom or whatever it was called. I think they had it in Final Fantasy IV as well. Or at least in the... Uh... Did they have it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure they had it. I think... I'm not sure if it was unique to the North American release or not. But, but yeah, we learned some basic stuff. So let's go in here and we'll start talking to some dudes and learn a little bit. Save points, you can use a sleeping bag or a tent. Um, basically, a sleeping bag is kind of like the Omega Soul from Xenogears, um, except it can only be used as a save point. It's basically a tent for one character. Um, there's almost no reason to ever uh, use sleeping bags past like the first couple hours of the game, uh, just because there's you'll have enough money to buy tents, and we get a lot of money in this game. We need it all, but we get a lot of money in this game. Um, the North American version, the SNES version, tr translated uh, Gil as GP in this game, so that's currency we're going to go with. Um, I might say Gil by mistake because I'm used to it, but yeah, it's Gil, GP, Gold, whatever you want to call it. Basically, you save and you don't lose, and you only lose what happens after you save. When buying armor and weapons, you'll see some symbols next to characters, triangles uh, pointing up indicate increasing power. Triangles pointing down are less. Equal is no change. Usually means you're already equipped with it, but they have a separate uh, icon for that as well. Symbol under the character means the person is now in your party. Want to know how to write a chocobo? Press the A button. Yeah, we don't really need to learn about this right now because, well, we can't, well, actually we can go ride a chocobo. And in fact, I will be showing that off, but uh, choose with the A button, uh, cancel a choice with the B button, uh, view the menu with the X button. Remember, this is Super Nintendo controllers, not uh, Xbox controller uh, orientation, so if your brain is trying to, you know, work around there, that would be why it doesn't make sense. Uh, curative items, restore HP, staying at the end restores you to full. What about relics? Relics give your party a variety of abilities. I believe in Jap and the original Japanese, it was just called an accessory. Uh, for some reason, they translated it to relics. It is what it is. It's weird, but sure. It's the only game, I think, that used the uh, term relics in terms of the Final Fantasy franchise. I think everyone else just called it an accessory. <laughs> but whatever. Uh, they talk about different accessories here. I'll talk about them more in terms of when we can get our hands on them ourselves. Beyond that, it doesn't really matter. Valuables are often hidden in pots. A tincture. Uh, for some reason, they had weird translations. Uh, I already talked about it in terms of the tonics being basically a potion. A tincture is basically an ether, as you can see over on the uh, side there. Um, funny thing here is... Alright. Ha! Sometimes monsters lurk inside of treasure chest. They assume that you went straight for the treasure chest. Typically, if there's a monster in a treasure chest, you can steal here and attack. Uh, most of the enemies early on in the game have nothing but tonics or potions or basic healing items, uh, like status healing items to steal. So stealing early on doesn't, it's not really helpful, but it also doesn't really matter one way or another. I already talked to you. But yeah, he'll laugh at you. Most of the time when you do open a chest that has monsters in it, there will be uh, an I or some kind of an item that you get after the fight in order to you know make it worthwhile. So you should always open the treasure chests. Uh, we're going to stick with weight mode in this game. Uh, you can put it to active if you want uh, to be a little more dynamic. I like to take my time and think, but to each their own. 
White numbers during battle are damage, green are recovery, back row damage. Uh, I'll talk about more about that in a moment. Damage is more severe when caught in a pincer attack. Use care when running. All right, run from battles using L and R. Pretty basic. Full meter in the lower right means character will uh, be next to accept battle commands. Basically, it's an ATB system. Pretty straightforward when it comes to that. Selecting a spell, press the L or R buttons to select multiple targets. Left or right to uh, on the control pad to select row or defense. So you can change your row or you can just defend. It's like in most games. Defense cuts things in half. Of course it does. Sleeping bag, thank you. Okay, I already talked to you. Color changes indicate status. Blue. Uh, basically, these are auras you can see here. Yellow is safe, which is protect. Green is shell, which is magic defense. Uh, red is haste. White is slow. Uh, pink is stop. And that's pretty much it. Okay. All right, one more room. Might want to go out and get some experience in the world before coming in here. No, I think we're good. Uh, so yeah, there's a bunch of guys here. Need status info. The enemy can't strike you, but you're easy target for spells. You'll revert to normal if it hits you. I'm going to go over all of the status effects all at once, but I don't want to jam it home. So if you are interested in uh, a lot of what these guys have to say, um, you can pause and read it for yourself. A uh, three-way attack indicates a fire, ice, and lightning attack. That's completely meaningless. Doesn't affect you in any way. Um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Runic, we don't even have the ability yet. They'll explain what some of these uh, abilities do. These are like special character specific abilities. Um, we'll continue until the battle's over, but that doesn't really explain to you what they do. Uh, some of the dialogue that explains things is not great. Automatically brought back even if status is affected. It's auto life. Couldn't you just say that it's auto life? Like some of the some of the dialogue in here is terrible. Curative spell or item on the undead for maximum damage, or you can just hurt them with it. It's not maximum. Near fatal status can result in special hidden skills, which we probably won't see in this game, but I'll talk about that in a moment. Each sword, uh, tech sword, has its own unique name that in the Japanese version you could actually name. In the US release, you cannot. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we don't get to name them. What about you? Reflect doesn't block spells that have been reflected off of others. So there's no infinite reflect bouncing chain. Which is probably for the best. All right, I'm going to go over some of kind of the basic stats on how the uh, the game works here. But I'm going to do that outside because I want to take a good uh, opportunity to listen. But let's see if we can go back in here. You know, the place we just escaped from. Who might you be? Oop, run away. This is the pits. Eh, not safe here. Better head to South Figaro. Or head south to Figaro. Getting ahead of myself here. Oh yeah, I forgot, they didn't put, for some reason, the uh, theme that plays on the world map this time is the Narsh theme. Not exactly sure why. By the way, the place we were in was Narsh. If I didn't mention so earlier, I'm pretty sure they did, but... Alright, status. Alright, I already talked about the uh, battle speed in the config. It's just uh, a product of... The slower you make it, the slower the enemies are. It doesn't affect the actual speed of combat. It's just basically how fast the enemies are compared to your characters. Uh, so that's all there is to that. As far as status goes, Vigor is the strength stat of this game. It denotes physical attack power. Speed is how fast the ATB fills up. Stamina increases the chance of blocking instant death attacks, as well as the amount of HP gained or lost from the regen or poison statuses. 
kind of a weird specialty, but okay if you insist, video game. Magic power does exactly what you think it does. I love how, like, it's like, oh, vigor, that's not necessarily super common in Final Fantasy games. We should probably tell you what that does. Speed? That eh, makes sense. Stamina does something completely different. Magic power. It's magic power. That's it. Determines the amount of magic damage you deal. <laughs> uh, let's see. We have defense, magic defense, battle power are all determined by equipment alone. Uh, you'll notice over on the right hand side and the bottom of the screen there, battle power is determined entirely by your weapon. So if we remove it, it's gone. Each character has their own default battle power uh, with nothing. In fact, if you take off the shield, okay. Sometime, I think it adds uh, like a hidden value to your battle power when you're not equipped with a weapon for some reason. Uh, not that it really matters and you'll never really want to do that, but the option's there. All right, what else? Um, oh yeah, I said this game was bugged, right? Evade percentage. Evade in this game does jack shit. The evade stat is broken, and with it, a number of other things that were supposed to do certain things are also broken because the evade and accuracy values do not work in this game at all. The evade stat does absolutely nothing in this game, and you can ignore it for the rest of the game. Your magic block percentage, on the other hand, that's a lot more important. Magic block is your chance of dodging both magical and physical attacks. This bug was later fixed in other versions of the game, including the Game Boy Advance version. It might have been fixed in the PlayStation version. I can't remember. Don't play the PlayStation version. It's bad. Load times are terrible. Um, anyway, uh, what else? Your basic physical attack damage uh, for a normal attack, and I'll put the, uh, the damage calculation on screen here for you. I'm just going to go over it kind of in a basic way so it kind of infers on how I'll be developing characters. But... Your physical attack damage equals your battle power plus double your Viger stat. Meaning increasing your Viger stat past 128 does nothing as 256 is the maximum value for this stat. And the, since the formula already doubles your Viger, getting it past 128 really doesn't do anything. That being the case, physical attacks kinda suck in this game. Magic attack power, on the other hand, is very important. Spell power is equal, or your magic attack damage equals spell power times four. Uh, each uh, specific elemental, sp or each spell in the game that's an attack has its own hidden battle power that they never show you. Uh, so that's that value times four plus, and then memory order of operations from high school, uh, your uh, level times magic power times spell power divided by 32. So the outcome of all of that will be added to four times your spell power to determine the amount of damage you can deal. Now, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now. Basically, what it means is it's a lot easier to raise the amount of magic damage we can do. So magic power is very, very important in this game. Uh, it is your magic power, however, is reduced by 50% when you target uh, more than or when you multi target with uh, a spell. Targeting more than two enemies leads to more total damage in this case. So if you, you know, multi target on two enemies, you'll deal 50% of your maximum magic damage to each of them, each of those enemies. If you hit four, you'll hit 50% to each of those four enemies, leading to more total damage even if, you know, your direct amount of damage, you know, or like a single amount of damage on each enemy isn't affected. If that makes sense. Hopefully it makes sense. Uh, the back row reduces damage taken and received by 50%, just like it always does. Uh, this is physical attack damage. Uh, you can change rows even during a pincer attack, and the game doesn't make this very clear again. Um, your characters won't actually move, but you can select the row command when you're in a pincer attack and you will take reduced damage as if you've moved to the back row. But like I said, you won't see any movement on the screen. So that's interesting. 
Uh, the Berserk status increases your damage by 1.5, as it usually does. Uh, critical happens randomly one every one out of 32 times approximately that's its percentage and increases damage by uh two times hitting the enemy's back in case of a back attack increases it, your physical damage by 1.5 some weapons ignore rows completely which makes damage calculations confusing and they'll deal full damage from the back row However, if the enemy is also in the back row, the damage will be reduced by half. So if you're in the back row and the enemy's in the back row, then uh, that uh, half damage will apply. So just be aware of that. Uh, what else? Uh, some weapons cast spells upon striking the enemy, and these spells can have a critical effect as well. Uh, but only if the weapon has automatic criticals. This only applies to like two or three weapons in the game, so don't really worry about it too much. But uh, these spells are also affected by being in the back row. So if you have a weapon that deals a spell as well as doing its normal damage, you probably want to put that uh, character in the front row, even if they're normally not a front row character, just to get the most out of, you know, the additional spells that will pop off. Um, finally, there are desperation attacks in this game. Uh, the way that those work is if you're in the near fatal status, which I believe is one eighth of your maximum uh, HP, then uh, you have a chance of it doing a limit break attack when you use the uh, attack function. However, we've just gone over the fact that the attack function sucks in this game and we're not going to use it all that much, so you probably won't see that in the course of this Let's Play. In fact, I don't know if I've ever actually seen any of them, <laughs> to be quite honest. It's just something that I never really see. Now, you can have Lock Steel here uh, if you want. I'm just going to use Terra to nuke all of the enemies because it's easier. But uh, yeah, you'll notice the amount of damage she did with her uh, fire spell wasn't any less against three as it was against two in the previous battle. So just kind of be aware of that. The enemies around here are all pretty basic. Um, there's nothing useful we can steal again from anyone at this point in the game. We'll have Lock do it just because there's nothing else we can really do. But uh, aside from that, yeah, pretty basic. Now, I know I've overloaded you with information in the first few episodes of this Let's Play. It will eventually balance out. Um, let's keep going down over here. There are some slightly more interesting enemies in the... Uh, In here, I believe you can steal antidotes from these guys. Not that that really matters. Uh, fire will not one-shot these guys. But they will die from a second one. So we'll just use our uh, normal attacks to finish things off. Unfortunately, because I have Terra in the back row, she doesn't quite have enough damage to... Uh, add on there so we'll have to take a secondary attack wow yeah the uh the half damage isn't really helping normal attacks just really kind of suck in this game all right down here we found a chocobo stable now here we have a chocobo no items but there's a chocobo here and if you talk to this guy, he can teach you how to ride a chocobo, which is the same stuff we learned before. Uh, you can control your chocobo by either pressing the A button or pressing forward. Both will make you move forward. You can spend 100 GP on it. We don't have... Actually, we have tons of money. I can show it to you, but we'll have a chance to do the chocobo stuff later. Um... But yeah, I just wanted to show you that there was indeed a Chocobo Forest here. If you ever need to, when you're on a Chocobo, you don't have to worry about uh, running into battles. So there's that as a benefit. Wow, I figured I'd run into another uh, 
another enemy, but I didn't. Um, here's the interesting thing to do is if you approach this, like they're expecting you to approach this in the middle. So if you go here, he'll actually move out of the way to block you. I, I, I found this out in my test run. I just, I love it. It's so great. <laughs> oh, it's you proceed. And then he gets in my way. <laughs> it's so great. Engine room? Oh, I guess it's like uh, for, for heating or something like that. Is that what it's for? We're ready to leave at a moment's notice. Oh, it's dangerous to go alone. Yeah, they're not too clear on that. There's a reason for it. You'll find out in due time. Don't you worry. These thieves have been terrorizing the vicinity. Stay away from them. Now, we can't really go a whole lot of areas right now because logically they've actually blocked us off from going a whole bunch of different places in a castle we've never been to before. What a logical concept. Doesn't look like it. This castle incorporates some of the most high tech devices in existence. For example, oops, they're all top secret. Yeah, well, what can you do? So instead of dicking around here, let us go and, well, we can talk to these guys. Go see the king. I'm going to guess the other guy says the same thing. Let's go see the king. This young woman. Hmm. What? Who do you think you are? My apologies. How rude of me to turn my back to a lady. The young king of Figaro Castle, ally to the Empire. Why was I sent here again? <laughs> and a master designer of machinery. Champion of the technological revolution. Cool. We have Edgar with us. You'll notice the uh, that screen shows up in, uh, well, only certain si situations here. Uh, it's shown up twice before, and I have two people in my party. I wonder what the game is implying. You are the king. Surprise, someone like me knows a king. You're a thief, so yeah, kinda. And they just nod their heads together. <laughs> I love how that's like the uh, the way the game explains, you know, people like talking together. They just nod their heads at each other. <laughs> and Locke's gone. Okay. So you're an Imperial soldier. No problem. Figaro and the Empire are allies. Interesting. Please relax while you're here. It's not in my blood to harm a lady. Now, they haven't really talked about this quite yet, but um, your abilities. Now, what abilities are those? Is it this rare magic thing? I'll give you three reasons. Somehow I'm reminded of Don Corneo from Seven, but uh, first of all, your beauty has captivated me. Second, I'm dying to know if I'm your type. I guess your abilities would be a distant thing. What's wrong with you anyway? Your technique. Guess my charming techniques are starting to rust, huh? What were they thinking with that fan translation? <laughs> I've never played the fan translation, to be quite honest. I looked at it briefly and then decided to replay this version of the game anyway. But uh, yeah, Edgar is kind of a bit of a player. Suppose a normal girl would have felt something from those words. Or flattered.
You're hardly normal, huh? Well, you have amnesia and you're a character in an RPG, so yeah. Anyway, feel free to wander about. We now have basically free reign over the, almost the entire castle, which is very nice. Empire is using something called magic. Yeah, if you recall, magic's not really part of the, uh, the world that we live in. At least it hasn't been for a thousand years. Anyway, let's pop in here, steal that chest. You can actually steal a treasure chest in a shop. It's so rare. Here we have some basic items. If you want to buy any of them, do I have any of those listed? I know I'm supposed to uh, buy stuff while I'm here, but I don't think that's any of it. Yeah, no, I don't need any of that. Um, yeah, that's fine. So yeah, I don't need any of these things. You can buy stuff if you want. Um, that's entirely up to you. There's one shop on that side. And over here is another shop, this time with two treasure chests, tonic and an antidote. Now, I said in the previous episode that some of the uh, treasure chests will change over time. I will always mention if the treasure chests change over time. Always. So don't worry about buying anything you don't need to. Now, even though we didn't have one before, we are given an auto crossbow, I guess, from Edgar at some point. It never announced it, but we now have it. And so we have Noise Blaster, which I definitely want to buy, and Bio Blaster, which I also definitely want to buy. These are tools. They can be made to use by a certain character a little later on. And that's pretty much all I'll say about that until we get to that point. Now. Oh, they're still top secret. I was wondering if you'd tell me some stuff now. Yes, they are. All right. Uh, here we can get a free rest. I used a lot of my MP, so I might as well uh, go for the free rest. Though Edgar showers his attentions on women, most are too smart to pay him any attention. If you look at the Game Boy Advance translation, our king showers attention on women. Young, old, pretty, or plain, no one is safe. Apparently, he's built himself up a reputation as one hell of a player. One that doesn't seem to care about age. Kinda creepy there, Edgar. Yeah, the, uh, the fan translation from children on to old women. Yeah, I'm kind of creeped out by you at this point, Edgar. What, what's going on here? He recently tried to hit on the High Priestess. Surely he's talked to you. I like the Game Boy Advance translation here. Not too long ago, the king tried to hit on the High Priestess. Oh, did she ever let him have it? Yes, well done. <laughs> Uh, in the fan translation, he's constantly interrupting Matron. No, this is not Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, that, for some reason, in, I guess, both the fan translation and the Super Nintendo version, is the name they gave to the High Priestess. They just don't make it clear who the High Priestess is. Uh, it's kind of weird. I'll talk about it more in a moment. Yeah, let's continue talking to all the, uh, the people around here. Now, outside, this is Figaro, the Desert Castle. Everyone out here says the same thing, so I'm going to ignore everybody else. <laughs> all the other soldiers on Chocobo say the same thing. High Priestess said, or His Highness said he'd marry me when I get older. So yes, Edgar has some serious problems and uh, we should probably put him in jail. But um, at least in this case, he said he'd wait until she got older. Hopefully, maybe that's good. I don't know, it, it's kind of creepy. Yes, Matron. Uh, you'll notice in the Game Boy Advance translation, they re they changed her name from Matron to High Priestess because she is indeed the High Priestess. They just 
don't really make it super clear. And the music has stopped because as soon as you press the button, Edgar's twin brother, who is such a nice boy, we're going to fade into a flashback. What's wrong with father? What's all this talk about his successor? Hmm. One of the things I really enjoy about Super Nintendo titles is how they have the ability to say so much with so little. Uh, we don't, we tend to have gone completely the other way in a lot of more recent games where there's just far too much dialogue when there really doesn't need to be anything at all to get across the point a lot of the time. Appropriate music and uh you know a very brief scene is all we really need to know to explain what happened there edgar's twin brother who traded the throne for his own freedom we have i always called him sabin as a kid and i'll probably continue to do that um i know there's a wrestler that goes under chris sabin so that's another possible uh, pronunciation for his name. I'll probably stick with Sabin just because it's the one I'm familiar with. But uh, Sabin would also be correct, I believe. Looked so much like his father. When he ran away, he was a sweet little child. I wonder what he's like now. The thing is, they say that, but it seems like... Edgar, at least, looked the same age as he is now, so I'm assuming it wasn't all of that long ago. wonder what he's doing. Anyway, we get some interesting backstory on some of the characters. Empires smash the three cities on the southern continent. Just a matter of time till they come up here. All right. So let's backtrack here. Unfortunately, uh, one of the downsides to the uh, Super Nintendo version of this game is it doesn't have hold the uh, B button to auto dash. Uh, so we don't get access to that right away. Um, we do get a feature later on that gives us access to a dashing feature, so I won't be walking this slow the entire game. Uh, but uh, just so you know, we don't have that. There are mods to put it in, uh, but it can screw with the difficulty of some of the timer-based things, so I just left it off just to, to make things simple. But if you're interested, you can download patches to the ROM to give yourself uh, faster movement. Scholars the world over doing research on magic. Nope. Get out of my way. Long ago, a force called magic existed. People who uh, used magic were called mage knights. Now, the mage knight is a translation for this one particular line and never appears in the game again, uh, at least as far as I'm aware. So there's that. Uh, you'll notice the Game Boy Advance ones, uh, they called the magi or magi. Um, and the fan translation called them Magic Warriors. And Google decided they were magicians. Well, apparently, uh, from what little research I've looked into, this comes down to some of the different terms uh, used for magic in Japanese. Um, and basically just the translators kind of getting things a little confused when referring to all, you know, trying to figure out which form of magic they were talking about. Uh, specifically from what I read, there's a lot of confusion or a lot of, um, there's two different words. One that's kind of like magic in the terms of natural events, um, like magic of nature kind of thing. And another one, huh, weapons and items manufactured here sent to South Figaro. 
And um, another term for magic in terms of what someone would research, like magic that would be researched. Uh, so that would probably be the closest thing to uh, most types of sorcery that, you know, characters in a game like this would probably study. But the natural elemental forces uh, are probably a lot closer to uh, the first definition. Anyway, that's pretty much all the time we have for today. Next time, we are going to continue on through Figaro Castle, which basically just contains going up and talking to Edgar now. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.